Welcome to Imagine Wealth Without Risk, the podcast that guides you to fulfilling your dreams through guaranteed, secure investing. Here's your host, Ted Thomas. Hi, everyone. This is Ted Thomas, and welcome to the podcast, as we call this Wealth Without Risk, or at least Imagine Wealth Without Risk. And I love to talk about tax lien certificates and tax deeds, but I'm not going to talk about that today. Today, we're uh, very fortunate. Uh, my assistant is really on the ball because she found a gentleman by the name of Gary Wong, who you're going to meet in just a minute, and he's in Vancouver, Canada. Now, I'm really partial to Vancouver, Canada, not just because I do so much business there, but it's hands down the prettiest city in North America. Now, I'm saying that after doing business in Mexico City and Ontario and London, England and Singapore and all that. But the prettiest one you're ever going to go to is Vancouver. We have Gary Wong on with us today. Now, this guy's not only a member of the Board of Realtors, a director of the Board of Realtors, but he's a member of the Builders Association. He's written books. He's got an MBA. He's got all the credentials. But, Gary, I'm going to put you on the spot for the first couple of minutes. Now, we'll talk as much as you want about your book, but tell people about the imbalance in markets because my clients... We're doing business at a little bit different level, which I'll explain to you later. But Vancouver, the market just, it didn't explode. It's like a bomb went off there or something. And the yeah, same thing ended up happening over there in Toronto. Can you tell people about that imbalance, how that market just absolutely took off and other markets didn't? Yeah, we had an influx of foreign buyers earlier yeah. a few years back. And then a lot of people said it was when they did the statistics, they thought it was all foreign money. But a lot of people were actually, they immigrated maybe 10 years ago or five years ago, and they were permanent residency status. A lot of them were Mm. wealthy Chinese or wealthy Americans or Europeans or Middle Eastern. And they started buying up a lot of property. They saw Vancouver as a a great safe haven, great uh, stable economic place to just park money yeah yeah Yeah. so it was really it just took off and so what did they end up doing they 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 actually changed the rules for investing there didn't they that's right that's right so they started adding like a foreign buyers tax and they started adding like speculation tax and vacancy tax and a bunch of taxes to to um to curb the real estate market wow so now Tell us just briefly, and then we'll get, I want to get into your book because you're so knowledgeable about this market. Um, tell us what actually happened. Like a, here in Florida, I'll, I'll give you an example. Here in Florida, we, we have very economical housing. Uh, a 3,000 square foot house could sell for, but in, in a regular neighborhood, let's say 400,000, but not a heck of a lot more than 500,000. Mm-hmm. Now, if it's in a special place like Naples or parts of Fort Lauderdale or Miami, then it might be a million dollar house on the water. But yeah. generally speaking, 150 bucks a square foot is okay. So if you yeah. bought a 1500 square foot house, average guy, they're going to get in there under 200,000 even. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you couldn't mm-hmm. do that, man. It'd be pretty no, hard to get over, wouldn't it? No, like 3,000 square foot would easily be over over a million, but probably close to oh. five, and that's on average. And then anywhere like nice it would be like or anywhere not nice anywhere like a premium neighborhood you're looking at yeah, yeah. probably mid two or three million. Oh, i believe it now of course as far as i'm concerned it's worth it because the the views are so good i love to go i love to go look around the bay i'm supposed to be driving i say no somebody else got to drive i gotta look around it's so pretty there it's, it's such a beautiful place thank and you, people thank think you. it's just a, you think it's a little dot on the map it's huge I mean, what's the population's the, around the, like three million the, people Really? Three yeah. million. And what about the size? Would it be like 30 miles from the north to the south or east to the west? What do you say? How big is that? It's it's a pretty big sp- pretty, pretty big city. Yeah. It's probably 115 square kilometers. Wow. Yeah. So this is a big place. Yeah. And lots of mountains, sometimes snow in the mountains, pretty yeah. clean water and all that. It's wonderful. But anyway, all right, let's talk about real estate because you're the expert. Folks, if you don't know it, you want to write this down. I know you're in a car, but you can... Play it back later, okay? So he bought. He wrote the book on Vancouver real estate and, he, and how to buy it, how to sell it, and how to profit from it. So just give us uh, give us some insight, Gary, because you're the expert, and we'd love to hear it. 
I wrote the book in uh, response to a lack of transparency I saw in the industry. I saw a lot of uh, realtors like making a lot of money and a lot of the people just, just didn't know like the ins and outs of what really goes on in real estate. How do, I, how do people actually buy real estate? How do they sell it? What do realtors do to help their clients buy? What do realtors do to help their clients sell? And when it comes to investing, when I started learning the real estate investing game, it's a totally different realm. Like I thought I knew real estate investing just because I had been in real estate for a couple of years until I actually bumped into a veteran real estate investor. After half an hour conversation with him, I realized I knew nothing about real estate investing. And that's what prompted oh. me to study real estate investing. And I joined local real estate investing clubs and I uh, read a lot of books. And that's where I um, developed the real estate investing knowledge I have today. Wow, that's amazing. So you started from the bottom and worked your way up. That's right. That's right. Yeah, that's good. Now, so give us some insight. What should what should investors think about it? It seems to me if a house costs a half a million dollars, that's a little different than 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 you could find here in the states. It's uh, so you have a very unique market here. People- yeah, I think in Vancouver, it's a unique market where that the land is very scarce. And so there's only a limited amount of land. And right now, maybe 10, 20 years ago, the majority was houses, but the trend is going towards increasing densification and building high rise condos to just increase Uh affordability. And so probably in the long run, you're going to see something like Manhattan where it's all skyscrapers. And that's just because there's a lack of land. And so when I tell my clients to invest, I tell them to look for, entry-level properties, entry-level condos, because there's a high demand for rent. Just because oh. the, the majority of the middle, majority of the people in Vancouver are the middle class. And so I tell my clients, is there, are, when the market goes up, are people going to buy or rent? And they say they're going to rent because prices are too expensive, so they have to rent. And I say, when the market goes down, what are they going to buy? Are they going to buy or rent? And they say, when the market goes down, they're going to buy. And I'm like, no, they're still going to rent because they can't afford it still. It's because the middle class, the wages just haven't caught on at the same pace as real estate. And so they are all, there are always people who are going to buy the Honda Civics, the Toyota Corollas, and they'll always need a place to live. So there'll always be a demand for rent. So I tell my clients to buy the entry level uh, rental properties, which are the most in demand, and you'll be pretty safe in the long run. I see. Wow. Wow. So there is a market for the newbie. You did say you they have real estate clubs. So, so they have regular clubs around they that do, are they teaching do. people the basics? Yeah, they, uh, they do. They do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll be and what do you call those there? You call well, them they, real have a, they have a large club called the Real Estate Investment Network, and it's the largest one in Western Canada. They have a, a club called the Real Estate Action Group, which is a local oh, event, yeah. and a lot of people join that. And uh-huh. they basically div- meet investors and joint ventures, and they go into in-depth like real estate investing tactics and strategies. I yeah. see. And you're saying that that's a city of three million. Now I'm an outsider, so I don't know the demographics of a city like that. Are they, are they, would you say they're older people, a lot of young people? What, what do they have there in that city? I would say probably a majority it would be baby boomers as always, but a lot of millennials really? now because a lot of companies have set up shop there like Amazon and Microsoft and there's Hootsuite and there's a lot of like a lot of big Fortune 500 companies are setting up shop in Vancouver. That's nice. That's yeah, good. That's it's really closer, good. It's close to Seattle and so the because of the American currency, it's it's a steal for uh, companies to set up shop. Oh, we, yeah. get a, we get a discount, don't we? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Probably the only place in the world that Americans get a discount is Canada. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's right. Good. That's right. Yeah. When the currency yeah. is strong in the U.S., yeah. there's, there's going to be people yeah. coming to Vancouver and buying. Now, is there a lot of new construction in, the, in that? What do you call the middle range? Yeah, I'm, a little, I'm walking on thin ice. I don't know what I'm doing here. So is a $500,000 affordable house? Uh, I would say the $500,000 could get you a pretty good condo. 
a pretty good condo, condo, but anything okay. brand new would be maybe north of 500,000. So somewhere between 600 wow. and a million for a brand new condo. Wow. But it obviously depends wow. on the location, whether you're living in downtown or whether you're living in the suburbs or. Uh -huh. Now, do you cover all that in your book? I mean, do you have the chapters yeah, on that? I, I do have some areas that I mentioned, but it's more of a universal book. The principles I talk about in the book apply to wherever you live in the world. I use Vancouver examples, but I try not right. to go into too much detail and not focus on the numbers because the numbers can uh -huh. change depending where you are in the world. But the principles don't change. The strategies right, I use, yeah. the strategies to buy, the strategies to sell, and the strategies to, to invest, a lot of them are used all over the world. Okay, good. And do you do, uh, does the book have examples of other places? Like, would you have an example of something in the States? A lot of the things, a lot of the strategies, buy and flip, buy, reno, and hold, or buy, reno, and flip, it's very similar to U.S. real estate investing policies, real estate investing, U.S. real estate investing strategies. Because I actually studied I uh, a U.S. real estate investing course, and I oh. I spent twelve to twelve thousand dollars and took a course in uh, U.S. real estate investing, and I was about to venture into that space, but I just got too caught up in uh, the Vancouver real estate market, so I didn't uh, venture there yet. Yeah, so I, I know about wholesaling and assigning oh. and like oh. double flipping and all those things. Oh, okay, all right, good. So you'd have stuff in your book about it. Give everybody the title of your book and where they get it, okay? The book on Vancouver real estate, how to yeah. buy it, invest it, and invest. How to buy, sell, and invest. Right. Yeah. And you can find it on Amazon or you can find it on my website, www.garywongrealty.com. I'm actually like, I basically use it as a way to uh, promote myself and promote my business. And it's more of a business card as opposed to something that it's not, a profit center or something that I'm using to make money. I'm actually losing money yeah. to when I give out my books and yeah, but yeah. it gives you it gives you credibility. A lot yeah, of yeah, it gives me credibility. credibility. People, it also people way know of who you are. add value yeah. to people out there yeah. and educate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. And and how do you make your money? Do you make your money buying and brokering or anything I like that? I would say brokering is my main source of income and building my business. Obviously, oh, yeah. I invest in real estate on the side. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people invest in what they know. And, of course, I know real estate, so I invest in real estate. Right. Yeah. Right. That's smart. Now, tell me about a little bit more about the – I don't know how to describe it, but from an outsider perspective, first let me tell you, I, I have a lot of experience in Canada, but I bring the Canadians to the States to buy. And we don't do regular real estate. We do tax lien certificates and tax deeds, which okay. is an unusual market, but it's quite profitable. But I bring them from, you can, there's probably not too many cities in British Columbia or Alberta or even uh, Saskatchewan that I have been to and have clients in. I have clients all the way over to Toronto and uh, even some out there in Newfie and some over there in, in Halifax. So, so I have a lot of Canadian clients, but I don't even... I don't even think that they're quite sure of themselves when they hear that a Toronto could just take off and a, and a Vancouver could take off. Yet the, the other market is, is not flat by any means, but in comparison, there's such a, it, it, it's so diverse between Toronto and Vancouver compared to the other markets that mm -hmm. it's, it's a, quite dramatic. Do people, um, uh, how do people adapt to that? Basically, what they do is they a lot the sophisticated investors they invest where the market's going up. So when Vancouver was skyrocketing, they were investing in Vancouver, and Vancouver in the past year has been slowing down. But while oh. Vancouver was slowing down, they went into Toronto, and then Toronto started oh. implementing those taxes, and so they moved to Montreal, and Montreal right now is oh. taking. Oh. Oh, you so the, the oh sophisticated God. investors, they fly from place to place, and they go basically look for the opportunities. So money moves. It really yeah. moves. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, oh my God. Now, the extra taxes, is that a provincial tax or a federal? The provincial, mostly provincial, yeah. So the pr province decides, yeah. wait a minute, price is going up too much. So, And do, yeah. do regular people have to pay the extra or do the uh, just the uh -huh. siders? Outsiders as well as the locals. Oh, everybody has to pay this extra tax. Some of them are geared just towards the foreigners and some are geared towards locals because if the, the property is vacant, 
the city doesn't like it being vacant and decreasing affordability. Right. And so they're trying to increase the supply of housing in the city. And so they're penalizing, essentially penalizing people who have properties that are vacant. Oh, why would you prop? Would people buy a property and just leave it vacant? Some of them use it as a short-term, like a short-term vacation home. Some people just, uh, yeah. just like they just buying properties or just parking money, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so 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 that's how we hear the story. We read in the Wall Street Journal or whatever that someone came from Shanghai and they had fifty million, so they put to ten, 10 to twenty million into one of those cities, exactly. but they had to pay extra because they. Yeah, so, exactly. so that's what they're trying to prove. And then they Which never lived actually, there. They just yeah. yeah. It's still a steal right. compared to buying real estate in Shanghai. Oh, I would yeah. know. I'm not up to yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. It's two, three thousand dollars a foot easily there. Uh, oh boy. Oh, yeah, boy. it's like wow. more expensive than New York real estate. More than New York. Oh, yes. that's unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad we don't have. I don't have to go through. In Florida, we. <laughs> Florida, we have so much opportunity. It's it's amazing. Uh, you guys really have to work hard, work very hard to, to do it. Whereas here, yeah. uh, every, every time you just turn your head, there's another opportunity. There's so much. Florida's up to about 18 million people now. So there's about half of Canada just in, in Florida. So that's yeah, a real I, I, I've been to Florida. I love Florida. I think yeah. the weather's great yeah. there. And I heard the yeah. taxes there are phenomenal. I, I hear people move from California to Florida because of the taxes. I'm one of them. I did that 25 <laughs> years ago. Yeah, yeah. I'm one of them. yeah because the, the, the tax is so high in California. California is now up to 13%. In wow. addition to your federal commitment and your, and your state commitment is now up to 13, 13%. That, that's, wow. a, that's a lot of money. Wow. Uh, okay, well, let's go back to this real estate stuff. So you've studied this and you understand that. And your recommendation is start out with the... For the people in, in Canada, start out with a condominium in that half a million dollar range. Is that a yeah? I think I recommend to my clients to start off small. A lot of them like yeah. they read the Rich Dad Poor Dad. They like they oh yeah infomercials and they're like oh I want to buy oh. multifamily in the states and I want to buy a ten unit complex and and I tell them oh. well, if you buy a ten unit complex as your first property, what happens if it's all vacant for whatever reason? Like right. all of a sudden you're in big trouble. Whereas if you bought exactly. just one or two condos and start building a foundation and then later right. when you have a foundation, right. a small portfolio of condos, then you can buy, go into venture into multifamily. It's like yeah. a stockbroker or like someone who wants to invest in stocks. They want to go into like mergers and acquisitions and private equity oh boy. Oh and boy. options and forwards. And I said, why don't you just buy like a regular stock like Amazon? Or a regular yeah. safe stock like Apple, something like that, and yeah. start off small. And then when you right. become more well-versed in the stock market, then you can attempt the more adventurous stuff. But right. most people, right. they, they get led on, they read the real estate articles, they, they watch the, uh, the te real estate television shows, and, oh, yeah, I can buy and flip, oh, I can buy yeah. a multifamily, yeah. and I can, like, do this and do that. And for most investors... They say that they want to do it, but they don't, they're not equipped to really effectively execute it. The, yeah. the investors who can execute it well, they have a team of people behind them. They have their mortgage broker, they have their home inspector, they have their handyman, they have their lawyer, accountant, they have the accountant and lawyer in the place that they're investing in. So like people who want to invest in U.S., I'm like, do you have a U.S. bank account? Do you have, do you have a U.S. accountant? Do you have a U.S. lawyer? Do you have a U.S. Yes. Hat? And a lot of them yep. like, no, but I just heard from so-and-so or I read in yep. so-and-so book that I can just do it. And yes, right. you can do it with a lot of risk. So, and most people, yeah. most 99% of the people I talk to, they, they say they want to do it, but they're not at that risk level where they can actually take on those kind of risks. Yeah, you, you and I think the same. I, I tell them, stop watching those stupid television programs because they, they think they're going to go buy one of those houses and fix it up like that. And, and you're going to have a pretty right. girl smiling at them all the time. And the guy, the guy with a big hammer knocking down walls and all that, they have no idea yeah. what, what it takes to put all that they, yeah, back together. They, they don't know that actually the contractors. The yeah, the, the, the handyman, the contractors, actually, they yeah. volunteer their services to be on the television show. So oh, the, sure they do. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. the numbers yeah. that they quote are actually not the accurate numbers. You're like, oh, How the television show says renovating a bathroom is like two grand or five grand. 
but when they go oh, call please. their local contractor, it's like 10, 15, 20 grand. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, I think more like the 20. That's <laughs> right. right. That's right. Do a kit and try that once. Yeah, and exactly. You that out. Yeah. All you have to do is get out to Home Depot or Lowe's and uh, price everything out and you'll change your mind. It's exactly. amazing. It's just amazing. Exactly. Wow. Exactly. wow. This is good. Nice uh, conversation. I like what I'm hearing. I have, as I say, a lot of clients all over BC and uh, Alberta, especially. And uh, they're, they're going to love this. But uh, tell them how they can get a hold of you. Yeah, you can get a hold of me by going to my website, www.garywongrealty.com. I also have a YouTube channel with over 500 videos on there. Gary Wong oh. Realty is where you search on YouTube. Yeah. I'm probably one of the top YouTube channels in real estate for Vancouver. And I have a podcast. It's called the Vancouver Real Estate Show, which is available on my website as well. Instagram, Gary Wong Vancouver. Yeah. Those are probably the, the easiest ways to get a hold of me. So, well, that's all good. Now, do you get clients from from China or Taiwan or any of those places? Do you get I get those? I get some of them. I get some of them. You get some. Majority of are my you clients Mandarin are Mandarin or Cantonese. I, would say, or what you, what you? I speak Cantonese and a little bit of Mandarin. But I would say ninety nine percent of my clients are English speaking, but I do have a team of oh, yeah. people who work under me, so they can speak oh, yeah. Mandarin and yeah. Oh, great! So you can get clients from over there. So that's yeah. good. Because I, I know from now on, no matter what happens, our hearts go out uh, all over the world for, for Hong Kong. But mm, uh, yes, we'll see what happens. And whatever yeah. happens, it's going to be, uh, you're going to get a lot more business from that area. That's yeah, sure. well, actually, a lot because of the people from Hong Kong are, are coming back. It's not a mass exodus, but they're, yeah. they're coming. There's a lot of demand yeah. coming. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure yeah. that the, the news, no matter how much you try to suppress it, will get out and yeah. the things that are going on with the young people. The young yeah. people, uh, they are concerned about their future. The old people are concerned about the assets they have there. Exactly. Some of those assets might not be as valuable in the next few years because of that exodus, but yeah. we'll, we'll see what happens. But It'll like I said, the, to see. the whole world has a heart for Hong Kong. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So listen, uh, great conversation. Uh, a pleasure that you would uh, come on the podcast. I'm glad to have you. And uh, now I know who to call back and when I need information about Vancouver real estate, right? Thanks, Ted. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Uh, all right. So why don't we close by doing this? Tell people how they can get a hold of you again, a quick uh, website, and, uh, and give them that information and the name of your book. And I wish you good luck in the future. Okay. Yeah. So people can get a hold of me on my website, www.garywongrealty.com. They can go visit me on my YouTube channel, Gary Wong Realty. My book is also available on Amazon and my website. It's called The Book on Vancouver Real Estate. And uh, my contact information, my email, phone number is all on my website as well. And yeah, thanks, Ted, for having me on the show. Thank you for joining us today. Go to tedthomas.com to learn how you can start making smart, secure investments today. Be sure to check out the rest of the episodes to find out more about Imagine Wealth Without Risk.